Recently, I attended a National Wood Flooring Association seminar titled, Understanding Relative Humidity in Your Home. The seminar was very informative and I will share the information with you. Being in the Northeast region, we are exposed to extremely cold, dry winters and hot, humid summers. Without any humidity control, a house with gaps between boards in the dry heating season could become cupped in the high humidity summer. Water vapor is a gas. It will fill any space. However, other forces such as air movement due to temperature stratification have a strong effect on the dispersion of humidity. Normal living conditions are considered 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit with a relative humidity between 30 and 50 percent. This is the range that is best for your health, which is also best for your wood flooring. The humidity and health chart clearly shows the effect of relative humidity below 30 percent and above 50 percent. Relative humidity outside the proper range will cause bacteria, viruses, respiratory infections and asthma problems. If you have pets and your relative humidity rises above 50%, it is almost certain that you will have dust mites. Although not visible, they are feeding daily on flakes of skin from humans and pets. Signs of dust mites include sneezing, runny nose, signs of asthma such as wheezing and difficulty breathing. They cannot live in humidity levels below 50%. A study in 2000 found that more than 45% of American homes had detectable dust mite levels associated with the development of allergies, and 23% had bedding with concentrations of allergen high enough to trigger asthma attacks. I'm getting itchy just thinking about these creatures. In the past, I was only concerned with the humidity levels inside the home because that is where our hardwood flooring would be. I just assumed the outside air came inside and became inside air. What I did not realize was the amazing effect temperature has on humidity, and as a result, hardwood flooring. This is a typical winter day with an outside temperature of 10 Fahrenheit and relative humidity of 70%. When this air enters the house and is heated to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the relative humidity drops to a shocking 6%. As the outside temperature drops, your heating system is running more frequently, which makes it impossible to keep your humidity between the recommended level between 30 and 50% without adding moisture to the environment. This chart shows how many gallons of water needs to be added to a home in order to maintain the minimum relative humidity level of 30%. A new home built in today's standards would be considered a tight home. Long stretches of cold weather not, and not adding moisture back into the home is not only damaging to your solid or engineered hardwood flooring, but it affects all wood, such as crown moldings, baseboard, countertops, cabinet doors, etc. Removing nearly all the moisture from the wood puts stress on the wood beyond its limitations. Some situations where boards have shrunk and developed spaces will correct themselves when moisture is added back into the home. Other issues such as cracks in the boards or caulking that is separated will not usually correct themselves. When manufacturing our products, we must consider the movement of the wood as well as the movement of the finish. With our engineered flooring, we must consider three items that must move together in harmony. The plywood, the wood, and the finish. Inside 30 to 50 percent relative humidity, minor issues may occur, but the farther outside the preferred relative humidity range, the more problems are almost certain to occur. Wood will behave like wood. We will spend most of our time talking about cold air being heated and relative humidity dropping. When warm humid air is cooled, the relative humidity rises 2.2 percent for each one degree Fahrenheit. In a crawl space, the moisture comes from two sources, the ground and the outside air. The soil will wick moisture through capillary action from moist to dry areas. Water does very little to ruin a home with a dirt crawl space as it seldom touches any of the joists, sill plates, girders or insulation. It is the water vapor that causes the wood to mold and rot. Condensation makes everything wet, stimulating mold to grow and wood to rot. Crawl spaces are typically dark, damp and cool. We will look at an example of a typical summer day in the northeastern region. If the outside air is 77 degrees Fahrenheit with a relative humidity of 80 percent and enters into a 68 degree Fahrenheit crawl space, the relative humidity rises. Let's look at the numbers. 77 minus 68 equals 9 times 2.2 equals 19.8 percent rise in humidity. 80 percent plus 19.8 percent equals 98.6 percent relative humidity. This air will 
will then condense on the cold surfaces causing the air to give up its moisture as the relative humidity has reached its capacity to hold moisture. Condensation will form on the heating cooling ducts, the water pipes, the block walls, the joists and the bottom of the subfloor. The moisture in the subfloor will migrate up into the hardwood flooring causing it to cup, crack and sometimes even buckle. I've used a crawl space as an example but it's similar in basements if the conditions are created. Quite often people open basement windows to get rid of the stale air. If you notice a smell in your basement or on items stored in your basement, you likely have a moisture problem. I suggest getting it under control by closing your basement windows and operating an appropriate size dehumidifier to remove excess moisture. Also, there is a Humidex system that I am researching which seems quite simple and the manufacturer claims it is, does a better job than a dehumidifier and would be less expensive to operate. Getting the humidity under control will lessen the odors. Because of the circulation in your home, up to 70% of the air you breathe comes from your basement or 50% from your crawl space due to what is called the stack effect. If your basement has a musty smell, you have very unhealthy air. The musty smell is the result of off-gassing of the developing mold. Summary. Wood shrinks when exposed to low humidity and expands when exposed to high humidity. In the northeastern region, we have very dry winters and humid summers, so it is important to control the humidity through humidification and dehumidification to keep yourself and your floors healthy. Damp air takes more energy to heat and cool, so spending money to get rid of the dampness in a crawl space or basement will pay for itself, not to mention the health benefits that can't be measured. Engineered flooring handles high humidity better than solid hardwood, but will fail when exposed to dry conditions. Solid will shrink as a whole, while the top layer of solid wood on the engineered will shrink more than the plywood base below, causing the surface layer to crack. Much of the air that you breathe is coming from your crawl space or basement, Odors and mold activity in the crawl space or basement are warning signs that your entire home could be making you sick. The amount of moisture the air can hold increases as the temperature rises and decreases as the temperature drops. During the heating season, long stretches of cold temperatures without adding humidity to your home will be harmful to your health as well as your floor. Please watch our video entitled HRVs in your home. Window panes are usually the coldest surfaces in your home which is where condensation will appear first. As the chart shows, lower quality windows with high heat loss are the first to condensate. High quality windows show condensation at much lower temperatures due to less heat loss.